Okay, something is happening. They are closing the road here now in front of the Tiananmen Square, which is over there in the background. So I'm not sure what is going to happen now, but let's just see. So it seems like no cars are allowed here anymore. So they just pull the like little fans on the road. And it seems like there's also no more car coming from the other side. Also, we have lots of police cars here now. Maybe there's someone famous driving by or something like that. And yeah, you can see over there, they're also pulling a fence on the road now. So for some reason, the whole road gets blocked now. Okay, what I can see from here in the distance is that there's a big flag, a Chinese flag on the middle of the square. And the flag is being lowered at the moment. I think actually they do this every day here, the flag lowering uh, ceremony. They also have a flag raising ceremony at sunrise in the morning, I think. But I didn't know or I'm surprised to see that they are closing the whole road for that. I'm not 100% sure if that's the reason why the road is closed. Okay, something is happening. They opened up this side of the road, or this one as well now, and there are some cars coming. Maybe like a, like a politician or something. So these cars started, or they came from the left, from basically from what I can see here, from like somewhere around the square. Let's see what these cars are. So we have a black car in the front, then we have a bus behind it, a van, and some more black cars. But I think if this would have been an important person, there would have been more police. But anyway, the road seems to be open again now. So this was now, I think in total, maybe 15 minutes of total uh, closure time. Interesting. Yeah, if you can explain this, feel free to do so in the comments. Okay, so we have one more place to visit, the famous Tianman Square. And yeah, also here they have a security. If you enter the area of the square here, there's a police checking their ID cards, as we have seen it before in many places in China by now. And also here, many, many people. So this is also another very famous and popular place here in China. And it seems to be a high security place because there are a lot of policemen around here. And different types of police, I think. You see the, the guy behind me now with the green jacket. That seems to be more like an official guard type of thing. And then we have the, I think, regular policeman with a black jacket. So here behind me, you see another one with the green jacket now. And you see them all around here. And they usually just stand still in one place. There's another one here on the left. Yeah, if you know the difference between the, the green guys and the black wearing jacket guys, please let me know in the comments. And I think I have reached a dead end. I need to be there. Yeah, here you see the the black wearing uh, jacket guys. Can I go here? Over there? Okay. Okay, looks like I need to go around here. Please show your appointment record. Do you need an appointment to enter here? Like a ticket? I think though that the ticket that I have for the place over there counts here as well. Okay, so technically you also need a ticket to enter this place, which you need to buy in advance. But because I have a ticket for the Forbidden City, and that also counts for visiting this place. And they have another long line here and security check. Oh, I guess they're going to take away my drone again. But check out the view with the sun in the background. That looks phenomenal, right? Wow. Okay, I just got denied entry because of my drone. I kind of expected that, but I thought, okay, it's gonna be like at the other place. I'm just leaving the drone at the entrance and then I can pick it up later. But for some reason that wasn't possible here. I think they told me that I can leave the drone at a police point somewhere over there. But then I thought, oh, it's late anyway now. Let me just return tomorrow. So if you're visiting these places in Beijing, do not take your drone with you. It's going to save you a lot of hassle. Okay, it is about 5.30 now and I really noticed that it gets colder here towards the evening. Uh, the current temperature here is Oh, it still says three degrees here, but it feels way colder now because that's literally what it's been saying here for all day, basically. So, yeah, coming here in winter, all good and fine, but uh, I would recommend to do most of your exploring during the day. And we have people selling something on the streets here. We have strawberries here. Hello. Strawberry. Ah, are they frozen? Ah, not frozen. Ah. Okay, thank you, thank you. No strawberry today. Oh, no, thank you. No, not looking for strawberries today. We have candies here. We have some socks here. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of uh, Southeast Asian vibes here. And we have juice here. Oh, hello. Can I get a juice here? You make juice here? Uh, juice? This pomegranate juice, I think which I actually have never tried before. I'm wondering if it's hot. Is it hot? Maybe it is. 
Let me ask with a translator if I can get a hot juice here. Because if he can make the juice hot, that would be very nice. I think he still doesn't understand me. Is it hot? Hot? Warm? Yeah, let's see. I think this is a hot juice. Okay, so he's filling it up into the bottle now for me. I'm still not sure if it's hot or not, but we're gonna find out soon. Usually pomegranate juice is uh, quite expensive compared to other juices. How much? Okay, I'm getting 30 change. So the price was 20 for the juice. Okay, let's see if this juice is warm. I don't think so, to be honest. So maybe there was a bit of miscommunication. I think he didn't really understood that I'm trying to get a hot juice, not a cold one. Okay, let's try the juice actually. So like I said, this is my first time trying pomegranate juice. You can also find it in Southeast Asia, but for some reason I never tried it. Let's give it a try. It is freezing cold, to be honest. It's not warm. <laughs> I don't know, for some reason I was thinking that he has a hot juice for sale there. It's not bad, I like it actually. Is it worth the high price? For example, I remember when I was in Malaysia a few months ago, I came across pomegranate juice on a stall and the price for the pomegranate juice was like four times higher than like a regular orange juice. Tastes similar like grape juice to be honest, but is it worth such a high price? I'm not sure, but it's delicious. Oh, and to be honest, without gloves I can't handle it. I need to put my gloves on ASAP again. It's crazy. If you never experience temperatures like this, it's so cold that it hurts. And now I had my gloves off for literally uh, one and a half minutes and I can't stand it anymore. I am in Macau and in this video I'm going to show you my hotel room here, which is incredible for the amount of money I'm paying here. And then we are going to head out to explore the Las Vegas of Asia, meet some friends who some of you may know, and then explore a bit around, maybe try some food and see what Macau has to offer. But first of all, my hotel room, which is a five-star luxury hotel in the best location you can have here in Macau. This is the main road with all the big hotels, all the big casinos around me. And I'm paying only $65 a night here, which is incredible. I almost couldn't believe the, the price when I saw it online. Huge room, a very comfortable bed right here. Then we have a uh, yeah, closet here, some, uh, some ropes. There's also a pool and sauna area, even a heated pool here. Uh, which is good because it's currently like around 20 degrees outside only. Then we have a very spacious bathroom, a bathtub, a shower here. Lots of space here. Yeah, the toilet right here. So this is an amazing room for just $65. Really amazing. And yeah, the hotel is uh, the Sheraton Hotel here. And uh, yeah, let's head out, meet my friends and see Macau. Okay, so this is the lobby area. Looks very posh. We have a casino right over there. Then, wow, what a lobby this is. And then also restaurants around. And the whole building here is also like there's a mall here. There are other hotels in the same building. So it's all connected. And then actually my hotel also has several reception areas. So it's a bit confusing when you're arriving here for the first time. But yeah, everything super luxurious, super posh. I mean, this is Macau, one of the richest cities in the world. And then here we are, the main road, the famous area with all the casinos, all the hotels. All right, we're actually thirsty for a drink and we found a place called Mr. Beer. But, not good? Open at six. Open at six. But the it's door's open. Halfway. Oh, damn it. Okay. <laughs> it's harder to find somewhere to drink. Yeah, I think we gotta go yeah. to the casinos. Yeah. yeah, to be honest, we are walking around for quite a while now, trying to find a place where we can just sit down and have a beer. Yeah. But it seems to be quite uh, difficult here. <laughs> oh, no. Where we go? We go to Koh Tai. Steph ID. Ah, it's for Steph only. Ah, okay. Oh, oops. I think it's a Steph bus. Yeah. Ah. Okay. I don't work here. I think another bus. Another bus. Okay. Over there. Ah. Uh, Around the corner, I think he means. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're trying to go to the main casino area and the, the bus had it written on it. It looks like it's a bus for staffs only. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, Ryan? <laughs> I'm sure though that one of the buses is going there <laughs> because this is the direction. So we literally just walked around for about an hour here trying to find a place that sells beer. Like not a supermarket, but a place where we can sit down and have a little beer. 
but it's impossible here. <laughs> Over one hour later and we haven't found a single place. Well, actually, we did found one, did find one, but it was uh, closed. Yeah. So I have the impression that people in Macau don't really drink a lot of beer. Maybe in the casino area is the right move. Maybe in the casinos it's more of a thing. Yeah. But just a little street bar type of thing. Difficult to find. <laughs> Ken is moving. <laughs> I put it in my video. Because <laughs> the music, you know, felt nice. <laughs> Steve is a funny guy off camera. <laughs> I didn't know you were filming. <laughs> well, it's black. I think this way is going to be a good shot when you walk past. <laughs> <laughs>